<laughs> yeah, people call me see, where are you from? <laughs> Take a wild guess, you moron. <laughs> no, I love you guys, man. Thank you all for being so kind. Everybody's been real nice to me. A couple of guys with, with no teeth were very friendly. Um, that, that part was a little scary, I'm not going to lie to you. That part, I can hear the... I can hear that in the back of my head. And I'm not afraid of guns or knives, but I am afraid of being tied to a tree and having corn stuck in my ass. So I will say that now. I see it all, it was all the black folks outside leaving. I said, where are you going? Don't leave me here with all these white people. Oh, okay, this is a racist town, I'm sorry. I, I'm from New York, man. I'm from New York, we don't really have, I just say whatever I want to say. And, uh, you know, I hope a few of you leave, because if you all stay for the whole thing, I'm a failure. <laughs> I, gotta fight, I gotta piss some people off when they get so mad that they need a meeting. <laughs> They're like, I'm getting out of here. I'm going to call my sponsor. <laughs> well, why don't you and your sponsor both go fuck yourself? <laughs> How you like that one? There you go. <laughs> All right, good. I'm, see, I'm trying to feel you guys out, see what you can handle. We all, you know, we got one thing in common. We, it, it, we all would like to punch our sponsor in the fucking mouth. All right? And if you don't, if you don't want to punch your sponsor in the fucking mouth, he ain't helping you. <laughs> Just understand that. If you, oh, I love my sponsor. My sponsor always tells me the things. Like, oh, yeah, he's fucking driving you the wrong path, buddy. You're going to be using soon. So, all right. I met some guy today. I, he said uh, he had a big N.A. tattoo on his arm. And uh, I said, wow, that's nice. He just got it. He, I said, when did you get that? He said, last week. I said, well, shit, how long have you been clean? He said, three weeks. <laughs> I said, man, statistically, there's a 87% chance that you will be found dead in a crack house this year. And you're going to be bad advertising for N.A. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? People, yeah. You know, these crackheads trying to get their shit together, thinking, I'm gonna go to N.A., look down at that dead motherfucker, purple, with an N.A. symbol on his arm. <laughs> Fuck that program. <laughs> all right, good. So, hey, let's give a big round of applause for all the newcomers here tonight. And you might have to move. <laughs> all right. Yeah. And also, let's give another round of applause for the old-timers, because we need that too. And let's give a big, warm, narcotics anonymous welcome to all the people from AA who came here to get laid. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. We appreciate it. <laughs> now pick up your sobriety and get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Uh, I'll give you an NA style beating, motherfucker. <laughs> I'm going to back up a little because I feel bad for the people on the sides. I don't want to cut you out. But I, they, you made a big hole here. This is for the dance later, you know, where we all get spiritual. <laughs> I got a basic text in my room. <laughs> right? That's what they do, man. You have to lie around here if you want to get some ass. I mean, you can't just be honest not in here. You know, hey, how you doing? Would you like to go to my room and fuck? No, see, like, women are like, no, I gotta do that today. <laughs> what the fuck? What'd you go from crack to the convent? Come on now. You used to do it 40 times an hour six months ago. My sponsor first. <laughs> Shit, I fucked your sponsor last night. <laughs> All right. I'm just jokes. I'm just joking, everyone. 
<laughs> now, I think, I feel like there's a lot of repressed feelings in NA. You know, shit we're not allowed to say. So I'm going to probably say most of it tonight. <laughs> so here's how it works. You guys get to sit there and laugh, and you don't have to be the one that said the bad shit. <laughs> right? Especially you people that got clean time. Because look, you're all, like, stay away from newcomer. Don't have sex with newcomer. I mean, I totally understand that in theory. <laughs> but newcomers are just plain old more fucking fun. <laughs> you know, when a woman gets four or five years, it's like, I, I got to talk to my sponsor and my therapist. And, you know, it's too much, man. You can't just have sex with one. You got to have sex with their whole sponsee fucking family. <laughs> They're all in bed with you and mentally. I can hit them all, you know. Don't do that, that's inappropriate. <laughs> Take your finger out of her ass, that's not right. <laughs> I mean, you know. We're addicts, man, we do some crazy shit. You know? Crazy, man, we're not fucking cute. <laughs> and anybody in here who thinks that they're gonna get better mentally, sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking right. I said it. I love these people with 20 years, 18 years. Don't act like you got your shit together, man. Please, we know. And we just want you to know that we know. Yeah, that's right. You just, you just, you just dress better now. Fuck off. Yeah, it's true, man. You know, it's not even a put down. Like, it's not a put down. See. What happens in that age, you get more human. You get more human. But some people think they get more like superhuman. But they don't. And that leads me to the statement that sometimes a guy needs a meeting and sometimes a guy needs a beating. <laughs> you know, the guy that comes to the meeting late and says, I just want to apologize for being late. <laughs> right? And we're all like, well... Good thing you apologized, because we set this whole fucking thing up for you. Yeah. In, in fact, the topic was, gee, why ain't Bob here yet? Right. Nobody gives a shit. Nobody cares that you're late. How about some, you ever notice the guy who says, I'll keep this brief, never shuts the fuck up? It's inappropriate to punch him in the fucking mouth, which I don't get. Seriously, if I was running that day, shit would be different, man. It would be five dollars a meeting. Fuck you. Yeah, and and three key tags a month, and you get beat up in the parking lot. Right? Yeah, yeah. Slap the shit out of that motherfucker. The hugs ain't working, we're gonna kick you in the balls. <laughs> try, try a little tough love, motherfucker. <laughs> Do the best you can, you know? So, it's kind of weird, usually at the convention, the pool's outside. <laughs> yeah, like I, they said an indoor pool, I didn't know it was gonna also be the reception area. <laughs> I mean, it's human in there, man. I was sweating like Michael Jackson in a daycare center. <laughs> it's sweaty out now, huh? It's crazy, man. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't, I haven't even found my groove yet. I'm just feeling you out still. Don't worry. <laughs> This shit ain't even near close to how funny it's gonna be. People are gonna pee, man. And I like that. You guys have any gay addicts here? No, I didn't think so. Ha! Yeah. This is like a fucking Ku Klux comedy show right now. I'm telling you. Yeah, it's, it's terrible, man. New York is every you can't fucking get, man. There's so many people in New York that if you're not a racist now, you will be after a month. And I mean racist, not black and white. I'm talking about every fucking race. I'm creative with my hatred. That's right. 
There's people in New York, you don't even know they existed. You're like, I don't know what the fuck you are. But I hate you. You just can't help it, man. It's crazy, man. So I'm gonna have 20 years clean. All right. In 14 years from July. Just like attention. <laughs> what do they call this? Uh, smirkna? Circa? Smirkna? What? Smurfna. 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 That's where the little purple motherfuckers have their convention. Smurfna. And they got the uh, they got a lesbian convention called Lickna. Got... Oh, you guys are pussies, man. Oh, I get it. Every time I make fun of a minority group, you're all gonna go, ooh, like you really give a fuck. Please, man. Please, 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 please. This is Narcotics Anonymous, not the fucking Knights of Columbus, all right? We're all a bunch of fucking psychopaths. That's all there is to it. And there's no hope of getting better. Please, understand that. Yeah, yeah, I'm not kidding. You're fucked for life. Yeah, don't know. And when I say get better, people, I know you think, no, that's not true. The steps work. The steps work. We got to go up four levels to become regular lunatics. <laughs> NA is going to create a bunch of fucking lunatics. Before that, we were lunatics that were using drugs. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, tell me I'm wrong. All right, here's a relationship. Man and wife, right? Husband and wife. Shut up. Yeah, I know, relationships are all fun and games until somebody loses an eye. <laughs> Fucking crazy. All right? Now, you guys been together how long? 16 years. 16 years. I'm going to tell you something. I don't know them too. I know Phil, he got me to come out here. But I'll tell you what. Here's how they survived 16 years. They take turns steering the ship. Period. Yeah. And when one of them acts like, oh, I'm healthy, the other one reminds them that they're fucking psychotic. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, if they both wanted to act healthy, they wouldn't be together anymore. It's true, man. Always one person in a relationship is like, well, you know, you need to do this and this and that. You need more meetings. You need to get... Now, look at you, fucking lunatic. <laughs> We're both fucked. <laughs> Let's have fun with it. Well, every time somebody tries to take a position of mental health, shit's gonna get ugly. Just enjoy the insanity. You're pretty courageous there, sweetheart, walking through the middle of the comedy show. <laughs> nah, I won't say nothing to you, I got you. It's cool. Alright, so anyway, yeah, relationships and recovery are nuts. Now, people come to NA looking for love. That's like going to bankruptcy court looking for a business partner. <laughs> yeah, hey, how you doing? I'm a complete fucking psychopath. And you look like someone that would really ruin my life. Let's get together. Right? Right? Yeah. I love when new guys come up, you say, man, I met this fine-ass girl, man, oh, she's the one for me. Dude, you met her on the fucking medication line. <laughs> In rehab. What'd you do, roll up to her and say, hey, baby, you look really good in that, in that paper dress. <laughs> I can smell Haldol on your breath. <laughs> so I think we can have a fun time together. I don't even fuck, I, you know what I do now? I just go up to women at the dance and give them a, a restraining order. It's already filled out with my name on it. I just hand it to them, say all you gotta do is sign it and mail it in. And guys, you, we're all so full of shit, man. Cause we're not allowed to express. Here's our needs, ladies. Uh, bagels. 
and blowjobs. I'm telling you, you fucking mistakenly think that we have all these deep feelings about shit. I'm telling you, let it go, man. It's, how do you feel? I feel hungry. I feel it's warm in here. I feel warm. Yeah, I don't mean, I mean, how do you feel inside? Yeah, I'm fucking hungry inside. Wait, you come hungry outside? I'm hungry in my deep down. I'm spiritually in my heart, my soul. I need something to eat. They don't accept that shit, right? Guys, come on, tell me how you feel. Like, all right, bitch, now I'm getting angry. <laughs> I'm hungry and angry. I got a full range of human emotions going on. Ladies, that's all we got. That's it. We don't got no fucking hurry. You know, it's not there. I want it to be there. You know, after like an hour of this grilling me on how I feel, I actually started crying. I'm like, I'm hungry. <laughs> She wouldn't stop. <laughs> and they want, girl, women act like they want you to open up and, and cry to them and shit. Listen, fellas, the minute you start crying, she's on the phone with all her sponsee sisters. He's a pussy. I need a real man in my life. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. And we're sick fucks. Right, ladies, you like the bad guys. Wrong or right? Wrong. Wrong? Okay, some of, you, some of them will pretend that shit. Whatever, man. I ain't gonna fucking go there. <laughs> you want a guy to be sweet? What's your name, baby? What's your name? <laughs> Miss, Miss Stephanie. Oh, you like a dominatrix baby or some shit. Yeah. Miss Stephanie. Miss Stephanie, punk ass, get you there. Lick my shoes, motherfucker. <laughs> I understand. Well, aside from Stephanie, Miss Stephanie, Miss Stephanie, the rest of the ladies, you know, you like that bad boy shit. You know, you want a guy that's, you know, look, I'm not saying nothing. No, like, I never in my life hit a woman, ever. And I never will. But deep down, like, sometimes I like hearing about it happening. I don't know why. I can't lie about it. It's just... You can't judge me for my inner feelings about shit. And the ladies, you know, look, a guy will just come out. Look, you're a nice guy in NA. You know, you do the nice stuff. You're respectful. These women will not even fucking look at you. Some dude just gets out of prison for fucking, you know, beating his ex-wife half to death with a fucking tire iron. Right? right. right? And the women are like, aww. <laughs> He just needs to be held. Right. Yeah, if a guy sits down with you and tells you, I'm going to break your heart, just fucking take his word for it. And run. You know? And the guys are the same way. The fellas, man, we just want to be loved, and, but we don't know how to say it, so we pretend other shit. But, like, I like bad women, too, man. I do. I can't handle nice women that are too sweet. They gotta be a little bit bitchy. Like, I, I'm not saying I wanna come home and find my girlfriend getting banged by six dudes. But I just wanna know that it's possible. Preferably some big black and Puerto Rican motherfuckers, too. I'm sorry. Just being honest with you. Yeah, you like that excitement, you know? That, oh shit, I can get fucked up at any moment. My entire life can be destroyed in a minute. I like living like that, man. It's fun. Not that if a girl's nice, you know, you do, but it gets a little boring after a while. Do something, man. Kick me in the balls one day. Something. Just keep me fucking on my toes, you know? That nice shit after a while, you know? You're like waiting for the like something bad needs to happen, you know. And then you so you start a fight with her, and then she flips out and tries to stab you and shit. 
and then you feel fulfilled. <laughs> in New York, we got a lot of gay people in, in recovery. And let me just say right off the bat, look, I know that there's racism and separate separate separation. I was gonna say, I was gonna make up my own word, like one of them guys who makes it throws words into the readings, you know? Right? I love that shit. Yeah, but there's I know there's separate people and shit. But look, if you lie, you ain't getting no better. So I tell the truth about my shit. When I was a kid, I grew up in the Bronx, right? We didn't have like. Uh, we had a mixture of people all around and the only thing I knew about other kind of people was what my grandparents told me, right? That's what we learned. So the shit ain't really your fault when you're little. Other people tell you about other people. So you grow up thinking, you know, so when I was a kid, my grandmother said, don't get caught stealing cars. She didn't say don't steal cars. <laughs> She said, don't get caught. You grew up in an Italian house. She said, because if you get caught stealing cars, you're going to end up in jail. And some big black guy named Bubba's going to fuck you in the ass. <laughs> now, that was the crime prevention message. <laughs> now, I know black folks don't say that to their kids, right? Bro, you never heard that when you were little. You better not go to jail with some little white guy. <laughs> little white guy named Chad. <laughs> yeah, fuck you in the ear. <laughs> you see, yeah, no, you just, it, it's true though, like, what, what I'm saying is like, and I don't do this in my regular act, I just say what the fuck I want to say and everyone can go fuck themselves. But in NA, I like to explain certain parts of my act, just so, because I don't get to speak, they don't ask me to speak nowhere. <laughs> right. There's a zero percent chance of me speaking at a convention. <laughs> So this is the only way I get to sneak in little fucking philosophies that I have about life, right? But I just think that if we can be honest with each other about things, we can get better, you know? And some people don't want to get better. Let me tell you, it's all right. If you want to be a bigoted fucking racist prick, fine. And I mean that to the black and the white people and the Jews and the fucking gays and everybody. If you want to stay that way, that's fine. What I learned was... See, I was married in the, in the 80s, and uh, my wife got sick with the virus. You guys ever hear of the virus? Yeah. You heard of that, right? AIDS? They got that shit. It's not here, though, but they got it in other places. <laughs> right. They got it, the virus, you get it in you. So I, this woman I fell in love with in NA, she ended up getting sick and died on me, you know, like in a short period of time. Back in the day, they didn't have the medication and shit. But what happened to me was, uh, because of N.A., I was able to be there for her, take care of her, and just stick and stay. It was a wonderful experience, really. But what I learned was how fucking much time I wasted thinking about other people's bullshit, or their ethnicity, or their sexuality, or any of that. All of a sudden, none of that shit mattered to me, you know? Because life got real. It was a real deal thing I was going through, right? And then I had to go... When she was sick, we had to take her to the hot doctors and to these uh, places. And guess what? It was all like gay dudes helping her. And yeah, there was nobody like me there. You know, there was no, no Italian guys. Hey, how you doing? I'm going to help you out with your AIDS problem. Me. Hey. Yeah, these motherfuckers think HIV is a cable station or some shit. But, so... I just checked, you know, and what happened was I, I got to have more people in my life, and so I won by not being prejudiced, you know? So I'm just saying that just so you, because I'm going to say some more racial jokes, and I don't want you to judge me. Bring it up, bring it up. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. I want 
into a gay bar by accident again. <laughs> and this big Jamaican dude came up to me. And you ever get in a situation where you don't have, have the time to become a politically correct, phony white person? <laughs> and you just say shit? So this guy is like wanting to do bad things to my ass. <laughs> Well, he said, I want to do bad things to your ass, man. That's how I knew. So I just looked at him, I said, sir, I'm working on myself to 12 steps and 12 traditions, uh, but I still, racism and homophobia are very difficult things to overcome. And I can't do it all at once. Let me fuck a white dude. And if I like it, I'll holla at you. <laughs> See what I'm saying? It's all right, man. It's fun. It's fun shit. You know, when you, when you get stuff out of the way, like if people say, are you racist? No, no, because you're afraid. But it's not, I'm not saying, look, look, uh, hopefully none of us in here are out beating on nobody. And I'm sure, look, man, 90, most NA people that I've met are beautiful, loving people. Black, white, Chinese, oh, well, there's no Chinese people here. I don't think I've ever seen a Chinaman in NA. <laughs> initial honesty out of the way and acknowledge, look, man, I got a lot of prejudices in my head and judgments of people, and I look at people and I can say what they're about without even knowing them. We all have that, but you try to work on it, and the more you work on it, the more fun you have, okay? Now, look, if I don't fuck around with the black folks, if I pretend to be something I'm not, I'm not ever going to get a hug from one of those big-ass black women that hug you and it's the greatest fucking hug on the planet. Keep it real! Am I wrong? Keep Am I wrong? Real. Now, some of you cracker asses don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> now, look, you gotta get a hug from a big fat black woman. <laughs> See, the black women are laughing, they're all right with it. You guys can laugh too. <laughs> it's all right, nobody's getting offended. <laughs> Come here, baby. <laughs> you could be walking down a hole and grab it. Come here. Now, at first, you can't. You fucked up. <laughs> you know, at first, it's right. You got titty all over your head. You get caught up in that bra and shit. You see a couple of newcomers in there hanging out. <laughs>
But I'm saying you gotta love it, man. It's good shit. And another thing, this is the last thing. I'm gonna move on to a different topic, but I just like to cover the race stuff. Another thing I want to say, because when you overcome, uh, you, you let go of, of anger and, and judgment, right? And you realize that people are people, then you can appreciate qualities that other people have, right? So, or, or groups of people, what have you. But black people, and I was outside saying, please come in the show. I can't work with all these white people. <laughs> no, no, I don't, you know, because they're going to hate me. They're not, I need some... Blackness. <laughs> Only because black people fucking land. They don't give a fuck. Look, they jump up and down. They point at you. Shit. You know, and I like that. And if I fuck up, like let's say uh, I drive around in Missouri tonight and shoot people with a crossbow or some shit, right? <laughs> hey, what I do with my recreation time is my business. <laughs> the black people be like, hey, other than that, he was funny. I don't give a fuck what he does. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's true. And some of the white people be like, no, I'm going to write a letter to the family directors. <laughs> I'm going to write to world service. <laughs> because that was very inappropriate. <laughs> Like black people don't say that shit. That was inappropriate. We got that inappropriate shit, man. Fuck inappropriate. You guys, I don't, out in the East Coast, there was a mayor like six, eight, eight, ten years ago. Marion Barry. Anybody ever hear of him? No. All right, look, I'll tell you about him. Look, he, he was a black mayor. And this is back before, he was like one of the first that was publicized, like a black mayor. And black people were happy. And I don't fucking blame them, to be honest with you. Yeah, you know, so they were happy just because the guy was black and he was a fucking mayor. Because yeah. they right, felt right. like it's about, you know, let's get some right. shit going. Right. Then uh, he was he got caught smoking crack. Right. 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 With a crack right. whore. Right. In a hotel room. Right. Right. And the black people said, other than that, he's doing a good job. Right. Kind of support I'm gonna need someday. <laughs> so you know, that's, you see what I'm saying? We can learn from each other, man. You get up tight about shit and worried, and it's all crazy, man. It's just to have a good time, right? You know, because life is short, except for people that are manic depressive. <laughs> I'm sorry to all my bipolar brothers and sisters. Life is short. Fuck you, motherfucker. I'm been ready to go. You know what I hate when people say? You know, hear somebody say, you know, I don't care if somebody's black, white, or yellow. You hear that shit? Yellow. That's fucked up because a lot of my friends have hepatitis C. And they got, they yellow. <laughs> well, that shit ain't right. That shit is not right. Now, uh, you guys in your area here, do you have, uh, and I, I'm sorry I said crack whore. I shouldn't have said that. No, because I don't want to offend any, any of the crack whores. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> look, look, look. Keeping with, uh, keeping with political keep correctness. Let's keep, let's, let's, let's get politically correct. Like, we got some people in here that would like our fellowship to be like this fucking tidy little place where nobody curses, right? Nobody can't smoke, inappropriate behavior. Look, I, I, I kind of agree with, like, all right, maybe we shouldn't steal all the TVs from this hotel. Okay, I can understand that. That's why usually at NA convention, especially back in the day, we're getting better now. Back in the old days, they would have us once. That was it. With the one convention, that was it. Now, what would happen was, the guy that managed the hotel would almost get fired because all the televisions were gone. 
But they sold three hundred thousand dollars worth of coffee. <laughs> and $250,000 worth of porn in the room. <laughs> so they started to realize that we're not a bad bunch after all. <laughs> Could you imagine if we all fucking just decided to relapse tonight? Oh, yeah, this bitch, your big fucking rock crack in the middle of the room. We all get a little tube and shit and smoke it. And uh, the next tomorrow morning, here's what it would sound like on the Hannibal, Missouri police scanner. Sir, sir, the Hannibal Inn is gone. No, sir, it's gone, the whole fucking place. No, there's not shit left, there's nothing. There's one brick. And then some crackhead would say, give me that fucking brick. Man, we're drug addicts. We're not, you know, this ain't fucking romper room, man. We're crazy, sick sons of bitches. And, uh, you know, forgive me for cursing in a fucking meeting. You know, I'm sorry, or saying the wrong terminology. You know, I fool around with AA and the other fellowship, all this other stuff, but you know what? Uh, we gotta just love people the way we love them. We got NA, the NA way. If you don't know it, you will know it. When they say love the other addict the N.A. way, it ain't something that could be described in words. I just look at somebody sometimes and go, man, that's not the N.A. way. And I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about when I say it. But I just know it's not the N.A. way. You know, we don't judge each other. We don't tell people what to do. We tell them, you know what, I love you. No matter what you do, I'm going to be here for you. See, that's the only way. That's the only that's way right. to be. You know, I, we were talking today, my buddy was saying, like, a lot of sponsees tell their sponsors, uh, their sp a lot of sponsors tell their sponsees, stay out of a relationship. And the reason he's saying that to you is because he's ugly. <laughs> right. Sure, you don't want me in a relationship because you can't fucking get in one yourself. <laughs> You just want some company, you miserable motherfucker. <laughs> you don't get no spiritual credit because nobody wants to fuck you. <laughs> I'm a good looking bastard. I gotta fight them off at meetings. When's the last time somebody wanted to fuck you anyway? Right, right. <laughs> hey, and the women do it too. You stay away from men. Why, so I could be an angry lesbian like you? <laughs> and I apologize to any angry lesbians out there. <laughs> hey, look, you could be a lesbian, just stop being so fucking angry. Right, right. You know, if you're so happy, why are you so pissed off? <laughs> I say to everybody, in New York, I was told, they got the gay pride parade in New York. And I don't care what they but here, we're queer. Get used to it. <laughs> we're fucking used to it. We got you, you're gay. You're wasting good ass fucking time right now. <laughs> Jumping around with your trumpets and your tubas. <laughs> I mean, I don't, look, I don't care, man. Can't you just ever raise your hand and say, I would just like to share the fact that I don't give a fuck. <laughs> like, really, about any of it. Serious, I'm just happy I'm not, like, in a shooting gallery right now. And you guys are a bunch of assholes, but it's better than being in a shooting gallery right now. You know? It's true, man. I, I'm gonna have a parade for people who don't give a fuck. <laughs> the people for the advancement of not giving a fuck. <laughs> you, know, you gotta watch what you say. And then people, a lot of us are worried about other people talking about us. And I used to be that way too, for real. But I got to learn to enjoy that shit. That's right. In fact, I make up, I got the gossipers, I tell them shit. <laughs> 
them crazy stories. And by the time man, that shit gets around, I got high 20 times last year. I didn't really get high, I just told these people. How you doing? Oh, I'm struggling. It's all over the NA fucking grapevine. You know? Fuck them. Break their balls. Take advantage of their, their silly ass shit. If you ain't got nothing better to do than to talk about me, then you're a fucking loser. Your life sucks. Right? Sometimes people say, uh, you ever, don't suggest to people, go tell that person how you feel. So fuck off, man. Don't tell me how you feel about me. I don't want to, I don't give a shit. Don't like have a support group for people who fucking don't like me. Right? Like get together, you guys can commiserate, you can have a Mikey D haters convention. I don't fucking care. Just leave me the fuck out of it and I'll be happy. Right. It's insane, you know? It's crazy. I don't, you know, but I don't let it bother me either, like whatever, you know? People are some silly fucking motherfuckers around here, man. <laughs> silly, silly, silly. Some of the parents are a little silly when your kids are in the meeting banging their fucking own head in with a basic text. <laughs> and you're sitting there thinking it's cute. No, I'd love you to come to meetings, of course, bring your kids. But hopefully, some of the other members of the group should take the kid outside for the parent, you know? That's and right. smack the shit out of them. <laughs> Because I understand parents don't want to hit their kids. There should be one representative from every home group. Just give them some old-fashioned fucking recovery. Because it's crazy, the kids jumping around and shit. And, and the mother's looking at him like, Amber Crombie. You're displaying unacceptable behavior patterns. And you're gonna get a week of no high-speed internet access. <laughs> Come on, man, we're the fucking psychos, not the kids. We're nuts, man. We had high-speed kicks in the ass in my house. Right? My, my father's Italian, man. He didn't talk to us with these big right. fancy words. He didn't even use fucking words. He had two letters in the alphabet. O. A. Those two letters meant a lot of violent shit was about to happen. Here. And whatever you were doing, you just stopped doing it. That was it. When I was a kid, my father would say, go get me something to hit you with. self-esteem from the beginning, so I come back with a monkey wrench. Hey, Dad, this will fix my ass. Going to Catholic school didn't help much, though. Going to Catholic school didn't help much with the self-esteem, you know? You walk in there like, Jesus died for your sins. Like, holy shit. I'm five. Already some guy's dead because of me. I ain't starting out too good here, am I? Don't touch your penis, you'll go to hell. It's a sin to touch your penis. Here, let Father Flanagan touch it for you. So my buddy Jason picked me up at the airport today, you know, I felt like I was at home with somebody from N.A., you know, it was just nice. And then after 10 minutes, I wished I could get out of the fucking car. <laughs> uh, 
he was telling me how, how, how his struggles over the last couple of months of being clean and you know he had he said I try I was really at the point of suicide you know and I said well how you do, before I get in the truck um, <laughs> Have you, have you worked through that shit yet? Because you know, motherfucker, if I die first, that's homicide. Not only will you go to hell, but you will be arrested when you get there. But no, it's good, man. Then he was talking about how the program just started working in his life, you know? And he told me this story. It wasn't one of those bullshit, I want attention suicides like some of us do. No, he was really trying to do himself, the motherfucker. I was shocked. I was like, holy shit, you weren't kidding, were you? But man, people don't uh, in here sometimes do crazy shit for attention, and that's fine, but maybe next time you can just raise your hand and say, I need some attention. <laughs> you know, don't go like shooting yourself and blowing half your fucking face off. <laughs> oh yeah, I know a guy up north, man. I'll tell you about this dumb motherfucker. Listen to this shit. <laughs> He shoots himself, the gun blows up and just rips his face off. No, the guy's blind now. It's tragic what happened to him. But I still get pissed off at the motherfucker for a couple of reasons. One, now he's religious. He walks around the meetings with a Jesus shirt on and God saved him and shit. He thinks that God actually chose him to do this shit. And I know some of you fucking lunatics think shit like that too. <laughs> That's okay, you know, keep coming back. Right. 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 Isn't it funny how keep coming back means keep coming back and get the fuck out at the same time? <laughs> you ever notice that shit? Right. So I talk shit. Right, 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 right. Hey, keep coming back, man. Really, we just want to say, please down. don't ever come back to this fucking meeting again. <laughs> NA is a big place, find somewhere else to go. <laughs> but this guy, he shot himself, you know, and he, he damaged himself so bad that, but then he found God, like the next day. I'm like, man, why don't you find God the day before? <laughs> you know, why don't you wait? But see, oh. all right, look, I'm gonna try to put this delicately, because this is a nice group. Usually I'm a na nasty son Pretty of a nasty. bitch. No, no, I mean, I'm mean. I get mean, but you guys are so nice to me, because usually people don't laugh. Fuck you. <laughs> no, I look, no, I've been nasty, but, like, usually I, no, that's good, bro, see? That's, that's how it should be. That's how shit should be. Don't tell me, you know, that was inappropriate. <laughs> no, fuck you, motherfucker. That's what addicts say. We don't say shit like that, you know? I have a defendant. Man, didn't you ever fucking oh, jerk anybody God. off to get drugs, you punk ass? Are <laughs> <laughs> you offended by some words? Oh, Fuck you, God. man. Fucking little bitch. <laughs> hey, hey, no, I'm gonna clarify something. Wait, I got Let me finish one sentence at a time. <laughs> so I got ADD, man. I'm a whole other fucking woman.
keep that shit to yourself, man. Because it'll mess. Like, for me, that's my worst uh, pain in life is my childhood religion. Like, because I always thought that God hated me because my father beat me, my mother left me. Shit, I, and the nuns would tell you, look, man, you're going to hell. I'm like, is that anything like the Bronx? Because, you know, I think if it's worse than this, all right, I'll be scared. But I don't think it could be much worse, so I'm fucking going. But, so, so to me, when that shit happens in NA, I get fucked up when people start saying stupid shit. Like, I don't know if anybody's ever had this, but my wife died, right? And then my father was sick with cancer. And this fucking dude in the meeting, the guy that shot himself. He told me, he goes, uh, uh, God is testing you. Like, what are you talking God? So God's testing me by killing my wife and my father? So what grade do you think I would get if I fucking stabbed you in the neck, motherfucker? <laughs> I mean, right? Shouldn't people have to be accountable for stupid shit they say? And then he said, I'm going to pray for you. I was like, dude, I don't want your God doing shit in my life. <laughs> Do not pray for me. Please. Yeah, please don't. Please. Yeah. You know, you can't love God and not love newcomers. It don't work that way. <laughs> if you love God, you just love the people around you. You don't know what has a direct like meeting place with I know you know you pray and shit but you gotta help people you know your sponsor tells you the right information and you trust them if you don't trust them get another fucking sponsor but if you pray when you do your third step your sponsor is God's agent <laughs> yeah your sponsor God put your sponsor there ask your sponsor what to do don't fuck oh no I gotta I'm gonna ask God instead cause I can't, he can't really, I could just make up what the fuck he said. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's crazy, man. That's right, dog. Yeah. I'm going to stop doing what they do because the black women will yell for me and shit. I talk about making it one day at a time.
I was saying before, man, we gotta clean this shit up the language, man. You know, we gotta be politically correct crackheads. And yeah, that's important. And yeah, that's like uh, crack smokers against vulgarity. That's like rapists protesting pussy. <laughs> makes no fucking sense, right? But check it out, right? So uh, don't. <laughs> What I'm saying to you is, don't ever accidentally use Noxema when you masturbate. That shit burns. Right? All, right. All, right. All right, look. I don't know. I don't know where that shit came from. I guess I spit shit out that I've heard of. Look, look, and if you, if, if some of the guys, man, in NA all over the country, man, Crack has brought addiction to a different level of low. Bottom line, I used to say I would never, I there ain't a motherfucking thing I won't do to get crack. I swear to God, that's why I don't do it. That's why I don't do it, you see? Yeah. I hate living in a half my house. Well, stop fucking getting high, you dick. Don't cry to me, you gotta sleep in a room with five guys. Well, stop getting fucking high. But crack, man, I used to, I did heroin, that was my drug of choice, heroin, right? Anybody else do heroin? Yeah. Couple of you? How about yeah. crack smokers, anybody? See, yeah. yeah. only in the people we get all happy. I'm a crack smoker, yeah. Yeah, I'm a crackhead. Look. What about the meth heads, methadrines? Yeah, okay, so look, all I want to say is, we got a drug is a drug is a drug, sort of. <laughs> Like if you did white out, if that's your drug of choice, you know, you gotta go to Office Products Anonymous. But look, check it out. The heroin, I did heroin for 10 years, man. I had the same fucking shoes the whole time. Okay, they would bend, they would bend depending on how I nodded that day. They would get worn out. Now, when I started smoking crack, I was in a fucking insane asylum in a week. Alright? You walk through, man, crack will make you walk through the, you got no shoes, you're walking on bloody fucking stumps. Cause you're right, your feet are burnt off and walking, all right? Yeah, crack is crazy, man. It makes you paranoid, fucking par. I was looking in the freezer for the cops. Right? Yeah. Freezer behind the waffles to the HBI. That's the Hallucinated Bureau of Investigation. They're coming to get me. And then I was in there a month, man. I, I ended up with nothing but me in the fucking refrigerator. Right? And the refrigerator was talking to me in Spanish. And I, that's when I knew I got a problem. And I had my friends come over and we got rid of that fucking refrigerator. <laughs> I went and got an English speaking one. <laughs> but don't say, don't say crack whore, that's not politically correct. Alright, these, these are not, it's, it's from now on we're going to say chemically enhanced oral pleasure technician. <laughs> shit to get high, you were a thief. Now it's like I'm an asset redistribution specialist. Pretty soon we're not even going to be drug addicts anymore, we're going to be substance enthusiasts. You know, fuck all that, man. It's crazy. Yeah, so, you know, we're doing the best we can, man. We really are. We're all doing the best we can, you know? You smoke crack, you, it's whack. You do heroin, you nod out. It's heroin, man, but the thing about heroin addicts, they don't fuck with nobody. You know? The, the crackheads either. See, the drinkers are the worst with, as far as society. But no, they are. The alcoholics crash into fucking cars and kill people and shit. Heroin addicts, though, I crashed in the inside of my garage once. I was nodding out. I fucking couldn't even start the car. I was Bang my head against the steering wheel. That was the end of the ride. Crackheads don't crash their car because they sold it. The drunks out 
there fucking around. What about this shit? Did you ever hear of a methadone clinic brawl? <laughs> it's fucking impossible. Here's, a hero, here's two heroin addicts having a fist fight. <laughs> A crackhead will rob you and then try to sell you the gun he used to rob you. <laughs> heroin addicts, man, we relax when we steal shit, you know? I'm like, yeah, we, yeah, we, heroin, man, you get itchy, man. You start, you get an itch, it starts up here on Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, you can stand at a bus stop for like a month and shit. <laughs> Just scratching. Oh, look at your boy, like, yo, Flacco. <laughs> Let's go rob some shit, man. <laughs> like seriously, by the time Flacco answered me, I was clean two years. You know? <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> yeah. Heroin addicts talk a lot of shit. We'll be standing in the park, yo, man. We should go to Florida, man. <laughs> Crackheads will go like, let's walk to Florida now. <laughs> and they'll fucking do it. <laughs> I'm opening a couple of businesses. I'm gonna take advantage of crackheads because that's the, the way, NA way. No. <laughs> oh, look, I'm gonna help them out, man. You motherfucking crackheads are people too. I'm gonna open up two businesses. One is gonna be the crackhead moving company. <laughs> what, what? You never seen a crackhead? These are fucking motivating people, man. When we're using drugs, smoking crack, we are getting shit done. Right? right? I seen a 75 pound crackhead running down the street with a transmission on his shoulders. Okay, the crackhead moving company. When it positively, absolutely has to be there right fucking now. You don't need trucks or nothing, no overhead. Just carry that shit to Washington, motherfucker. They got rocks waiting for you there. Here's my best yet, the Crackhead Carpet Cleaning Company. <laughs> we don't need no vacuums, no nothing, man. Send them in there, you fucking pull the DNA out of the coffee. You guys are wonderful, man. Beautiful, man. Give yourselves a round of applause, man. It's been great. It's been a wonderful show. Had a wonderful time being here. It's really good. And a lot, a couple of the ladies, if any of you are single, and you know, I'm just saying, listen, hear me out. Hear me out. My room number will be located on the CD. All right, look, all I'm saying is some of the women, like I've met some women in NA, like I'll meet them a year later after this event. Like let's just say tonight, a year from now I meet one of you and you know, we talk and we have coffee and the next thing you know, we're fucking like two animals. <laughs> like I'm fucking you like, like you owe me money. <laughs> okay. Oh, I wanted to fuck you last year when I first met you. I'm gonna be very upset. Okay? I'm gonna let you know right now. Some of you might be thinking, well, you might have inadequacy, you know, insecurities. We all do. You might be thinking, oh, no, he's a big uh, comedian. He's, uh, you know, he ain't gonna want to talk to me. Yes, I do. I want to talk to you. Okay? You can have me. Okay? I'm nothing. I am just, I am, I will please, I will do anything for you. Okay? I have very bad self-esteem. Take advantage of me while I'm here. Don't wait until next year and say I wanted to fuck you at the last convention. Because I will be mad and I will try to put it in your ass.
right. And the last thing I'm gonna say, this is sort of like a, it's like public service, you know? Like, look, we all laugh at dick jokes, right? They're funny, right? That guy got a small dick. That guy got a big dick. You know, my third best friend is black, all right? Yeah. Not because he's black. I'm gonna tell you why he's only my third best friend, because he's not that good of a fucking friend. Okay? All right. Yeah, no, no, the motherfucker, we go, no, look, he, he, we go shopping together, and he buys his Magnum condoms, and he does it in front of the whole store. And I'm standing there, you know, all white, <laughs> and then the whole place is looking at me like, what are you going to do, crack ass, crack <laughs> So I'm standing there, I'm like, all right, you know what, give me a box of Magnums too. <laughs> and a rubber band. <laughs> I have 40 boxes of Magnums at home. <laughs> I, I don't even use them for sex. I use them as trash can liners. <laughs> My sponsor is in a wheelchair. My sponsor's in a wheelchair. He fell off a building. He was clean two years. He's got 20 years now. He never used after that. That's amazing, you know? He lost the use of his legs. But it's interesting that um, he's still an asshole. <laughs> Right, just because he's in a wheelchair doesn't make him like dick. He's a fucking dick. Okay, I push him in the walls sometimes. Like, no, no, we'll be walking, I'll be pushing him, and I'll just like fucking snap. And, to be honest. Especially when he wants me to do work out of the workbook, and he never fucking did it. The new step guy, fuck you. You fucking write fucking 650 million words on one goddamn topic. You fucking handy, capable son of a bitch. But I love him, man. He's my man. But I'll tell you what. He, uh, one time he hit me in the stomach. So I sat down. Like an hour later, I was getting a revenge. And I let the air out of his tire. I was sitting next to him. I let the air out. And then I flicked him in the ear. And he tried to chase me. And he went around in circles. <laughs> If I get mad at him, I'll be like, yo, the only reason I'm your, you're my sponsor is because of the parking at the mall. <laughs> he lives in Florida now, in West Palm Beach, Florida. I used to live down there. And I moved back to New York a couple years ago for my career. And uh, he calls in the wintertime and says, how's the weather up there? I said, it's freezing, but I can walk, motherfucker. <laughs> Some of you are going ooh and ah. You don't even know the motherfucker. Shut up. <laughs> so we laugh at small penises, but we don't find it funny if I say some of you ladies have big vaginas. <laughs> See? You can't say that, can you? That's inappropriate. See how inappropriate it got all of a sudden? Oh, he got a small dick. He got a small penis. You know, he got a crooked one, a flat one, you know. Okay, that's great. Well, look, I'm going to tell you. I was with a woman a few months ago, and she had a big vagina. And I'm not, look, I'm not Mr. Big Stuff. I handle myself pretty good there. But uh, my balls actually slipped in. Like that. small dick or she's got a big vagina. Come on, my whole package went in, man. And she had the nerve to say deeper, deeper. Deeper? What do you think? I'm holding back a couple of inches? I got a 12-inch dick, but I'm folding it in half tonight, you know. I don't want to hurt you with it. And then she said, well, I had a baby. I said, shit, what did he drive out? 